Good morning, everybody, and welcome to God's house. Today we are celebrating the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Nice to be back with all of you, and all of you out there uh, spent uh, several weeks up in the state of Washington. It's been a long time. We have two uh, baby boy grandchildren, three, four months old now. It's been a long time since I've been around a three-month-old. They take, they are 24-7. Kind of like pastors. We're 24-7 sometimes, too. Anyway, uh, we're also celebrating the uh, ministry of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, LWML. And uh, our theme is Produce Good Fruit in the Lord's Vineyard. So we're going to begin with the opening song, Come and See. Please stand as we sing through this opening song. begin our time together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we begin with the confession and forgiveness, and we'll take a moment of silence uh, for private confession. Please do so here and at home. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, please. Most merciful God, we do confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not fully lived as your kingdom people. We have not always brought forth the fruits of righteousness as we are. We observe a moment of silence. And together we continue. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways and bring forth kingdom fruit to the glory of your holy name. 
In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may God the Holy Spirit empower you and me to bear the fruit God wants of us as servants in his vineyard. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with passages from the scriptures on fruit production. And let me just say, I made a mistake in this. The, the first part that you read should not be Jesus said, but St. John says, St. John the Baptist. Okay, if you want to insert his name, you can do so. Let me begin. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. He delights in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in due season. St. John said, Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say, We have Abraham as our father. Jesus teaches, By their fruit you will recognize people. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If one remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. I appointed you to go, and bear fruit that will last. St. Paul says, Therefore, my brothers, you belong to one another, and to Christ, who was raised from the dead, in order that you might bear fruit to God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Since you live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit and not become conceited. And again, St. Paul writes, We pray that you may live a life worthy of the Lord Jesus and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, because God has brought us into the kingdom of his Son, whom he loves. In him we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. We sing the song of praise, I want to praise your name.
Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come before your throne of goodness and mercy this day. And we thank you, dear Lord, that you have planted this vineyard here, this vineyard at our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Winnetka, California, over 60 years ago. Today, dear Lord, we thank you for this ministry, and we pray that we are found worthy, worthy to serve you, by producing the fruit you want from us of obedience to your will, of true worship and praise, and service to you here in this place and around the world. Bless our time together this day and empower us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and we will practice the peace wave. Okay, everybody? So let's do the peace wave to the musicians and the singers. And you can take out your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Matthew chapter 21. Okay, Matthew chapter 21, and um, we will read that, the parable of the tenants, okay? So today's theme is all about kingdom people producing the fruit that God wants from them in his kingdom here in this world, or it can be taken away from them, which is a serious issue, and we're going to see that uh, as we work our way through this parable. This parable is one of three that Jesus teaches on during Holy Week. So we're right before his crucifixion, and all three parables talk about the unfaithfulness of the Jewish leadership of the day. So really, these three parables are Jesus' last call to repentance for the leadership, which finally ends in their uh, killing him or having him killed on Good Friday. Our parable for the day is called the parable of the tenants, but it also could be called the parable of the rejected son. Okay? So let me read. I'm going to start with verse 33 uh, through the end of the chapter. Listen to another parable, Jesus said. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He rented the vineyard to farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect its fruit. But the tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. But last of all, he sent his son. And he, and he sent his son, they will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? The people repro re replied, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end. And he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on him on whom the, fall, the stone falls, he will be crushed. 
When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. The first part of the sermon is the parable, if you want to turn back to it. The story, God, of course, is the landowner. He is the owner of the vineyard. And the vineyard, of course, is the children of Israel. And notice what God does. He plants the vineyard, okay? He puts a fence around the vineyard for protection so animals and others won't come in and steal the fruit and steal the vine. He puts a wine press in the, in the vineyard so that there is what? Production of the fruit and the wine. And lastly, he puts a tower in the vineyard so a guard can watch over and protect the vineyard. God plants the vineyard. The vineyard is Israel. And the last thing he does, he puts tenants in charge. They are given the freedom to run the operation as they see fit. They are given total responsibility, okay? But now God comes as the owner comes. He wants to receive a portion of the crop, of the fruit of production. And the tenants are evil because they want it for themselves. It's all about them. And by the way, that becomes the test in all of this. So what does God do? He sends the prophets. They kill one. They stone another. They treat them badly. And over a long period of time, finally God says, I'm going to send my son. And the tenants see when the son comes from the owner, they say, this is the heir. We, if we kill him, we'll get to take all that is his. And so they take him out of the city, and they kill him. The point here is that this is a, a powerful example of what happened to Israel 2,000 years ago. And I want you to think through this. God expected the leadership and the people of Israel to produce a crop. And what is the fruit that he expected? It's very simple. The fruit is, first of all, repentance. That's why we had confession in our service today. And it's amazing today that so many, there's no confession anymore. I think I preached enough times on that. But isn't that amazing? The, the fruit God wants, first of all, from his people is repentance. And we live in a world that says no need for repentance. So repentance, true worship of God, compassion, mercy, thanksgiving. And the other biggie is obedience to God's will. Simple. It's called the Ten Commandments. And again, we're living in a world where this is, again, the Ten Commandments are gone. I guess when they're gone, no need for repentance, therefore no need for the things of God. Amazing. I don't want to get off on that tangent. All right? So the parable is the most stern. Is there a word sternest? Is the most harsh. Let me use that word judgment against God's people Israel. And it is because they live in contempt, the leadership live in contempt of the gospel and the good news of salvation that God brings through his son. They are in full indifference, unfruitfulness, and deliberate rebellion and contempt and disobedience of the will of God. So I want you to think about this. After all those years, sending the prophets, and now finally sending the Son, God is replacing Israel as the custodian of the gospel message for the world. You know, we Gentiles, we, after 2,000 years, we think, well, what a big deal. Well, it was a big deal, folks. Because up until that time, Israel, through from creation, was the custodian of the message of God. And now, right after the time of Christ, that changed. Look at the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, mission work began where? In Jerusalem. 
and then it went to Judea, and then to Samaria, and then Acts 1 to the ends of the earth. The Jewish people were replaced. They were replaced by who? This is nuts. The Gentiles. Who would have thought that non-Jews would become now the primary part of the new kingdom of God? I mentioned in the early service, and I, I'm sorry, but it's just amazing to me. Who would have thought that the nation of Iran, a hotbed of Islam, is producing uh, so many believers that are rising up to accept Christ? Or look at Africa. I preached, said this so many times. 50 years ago, we never would have thought that there would be more Lutherans in Africa than in North America. Amazing what God is doing. It may be a, a little, you know, exclamation point against us in, on the Western Hemisphere about how we are as disciples and workers in the vineyard, but they, that was a big deal. And they went from the Jewish, and many of the Jewish people came to Christ as their Messiah. Okay? Many did. But finally, it went where? To the Gentiles to the Roman world of the day. And in early Christian history, after, after, the, after the book of Acts and after Paul's letters, it spread to Asia, Africa, and up into Europe. Amazing, the, the spread and the new covenant, okay? Herein we also learn that the people, the workers in the kingdom, in the vineyard of God, and that's you and me, that's us preachers, that's us church leaders and workers, that's us lay people in the kingdom. We have an accountability before God. And that's the second part of this sermon. As one of the commentators said, it was and it still is a sad commentary when the church of God sinks to its lowest level. You know what that lowest level is? when it becomes useless to God. Let me say that again. It's a sad a commentary when the church of God sinks to its lowest level. It becomes useless to God. Fruit production is expected by God from us. And herein, we need to understand this. You know, people say, well, I believe in Jesus. You know, it's like this simple, yeah, I'm a good person. I'm a Christian. I, be, I know my Bible. That, that, that's only part of the story. But what are you doing for the Lord Jesus Christ? What effect is the gospel having in your life? Well, I don't know. I, that's exactly true for so many. There's this disconnect. Oh, yeah, I know about, but then there's nothing that is being produced, okay? The test here is, the test is, is this all for me and what I want? Or am I here to produce for what God wants? And I think here, and we all have a problem. I think for many in America today and in our world, Christianity is all about what God's going to do for me. He's supposed to keep everything nice for me. He's supposed to work everything out, so solve all of my problems. Now, we're here to produce what God wants from us in response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fruit production is still required. And, and, and in preparing this sermon, I think of our congregation. We've been here over 60 years. In 1957, God planted this vineyard here in this place. And the story that the founding pastor Johnson tells about how the money came the day of, the morning of, the signing of the papers to purchase the land. And how God planted that, worked that out. And we, uh, this is always a call for us. It's always a call of recommitment to reserve and to be a, and produce the fruit God wants. And again, let me go through the fruit. What is it? It's repentance for us, recognition of our sin, unworthiness. It is true worship, not just 
superficial worship. It is compassion, mercy, thanksgiving, obedience to God's will, not to society's will. It is making disciples. It is living in mercy and grace. It is producing the fruit of the Spirit that we read. Love, joy, peace, patience. That's what God expects in your life and mine. And that brings us to part three. Where is the power? The power is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It always has been. The power in the Old Testament was the gospel of God's love for the world. And for us, the power is in the person of Jesus Christ. So I want to say this to you. Today, right after this service sermon, we're going to have a recommitment okay, of, to production. But you can't produce the fruit God wants unless you're connected to the vine. And who's the vine? The vine isn't the church. The vine isn't the, my friends. The vine isn't, the, you know, some idea. You can't produce the fruit unless you're connected to Jesus, who is the vine. And that is where sincere faith be begins. Jesus knew what was going to happen when, they, when he told this parable. He knew they were going to kill him. But he also knew that he was going to rise again from the dead and that a new church, a new covenant, a new kingdom would begin out of the ashes of the old. And you and I are part of that new kingdom, but it's still all about Jesus. It's your connection to him. It's my connection to him. It's not the superficials. It's not just about because, you know, it's my habit. I go to church, or I'm here for the salary, you know? I'm not just here because, well, I like it, what I get out of it. It's here because here we have Jesus, the connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, his sacrifice for me. That becomes the power of God for me to produce this fruit in my life here through this church, but also in my life as I live it. So would you turn, take out your worship folders, and we're going to switch things around a little bit, okay? We will sing the song, Shine, Shine Jesus, Shine, after the recommitment, okay? So first of all, turn to the recommitment, which you will find on page 5. We'll give the band members a chance to uh, find their spot. And um, this renewal of our commitment to bear fruit in this vineyard of God, it will include the LWML pledge. I love this pledge. It is a power. If there's ever an example of fruit producers in our church, it is the LWML. So we're going to use that, okay? And then we'll sing the song. So would you please uh, rise and let us renew our commitment to bear fruit in this vineyard. Okay, please take this seriously. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you planted this vineyard here at our Redeemer more than 60 years ago. We praise and thank you for all those who have served in this vineyard to do your work in your way. Empower us to produce hearts full of repentance and humility that we may humble ourselves before you, but also empower us to do your work here in your way. Mold us to be obedient to your will, to love the Lord Jesus with all our heart, soul, and mind. Fill us with compassion for others, especially those Keep us from being people who seek what we want for ourselves. Make us to be tenants in this vineyard 
who give you your share of the crop at harvest time. Use all of our ministries to plant and produce faith in the life of others. Fill us with compassion, charity, obedience, and true worship of you. And now, dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we speak this pledge to you. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love, and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. We will continue with the uh, singing of Shine, Jesus, Shine. You may be seated.
Today we're going to continue with a word from the uh, Lutheran Women's Missionary League and our president, yeah. Suzanne Dalsis. Say hello to Suzanne. Hello, good morning, good morning. Today we celebrate LWML Sunday with the theme, as you've heard, Kingdom People Produce Kingdom Fruit. All women of, are members of our LWML, and we would be so happy to see a few new faces when we begin meeting eventually. Our objectives are clear. We are to carry out the work of God's kingdom, develop and support mission efforts, and promote Christian fellowship. This year, with a surplus of funds, we were able to send $1,000 to the Lutheran World Relief, $500 to the Lutheran Hour, and $500 to Open Arms Pregnancy Center. Throughout the year, we also support two students preparing for church ministry. Your donations at Coffee Fellowship provide $50 monthly to each student. We support mission projects through our mite boxes. Those coins and dollars really add up. We are thankful that our members use mite boxes. Over $750 has been collected so far this year. We are blessed. If your mite box is full, please drop it by the church office. We'll gladly receive it. Ladies, are a, we're a small group, and we surely could need your help. Perhaps you could help with Coffee Fellowship, or consider helping the three ladies who do the altar circle each month. Quilters are welcome. We welcome new members, and you don't even know, have to know how to sew. The 69 quilts that you see here on the altar and in the pews are the year-long effort of the quilting group. Quilts are given to Lutheran World Relief for shipment around the world. Our quilts last year were shipped to the Ukraine, to the Bahamas, and to Beirut, Lebanon. Donations to help with shipping costs can be sent to the church, and those at the 9 a.m. service received special envelopes. Today, we thank Pastor Barth for his support and all of our congregation members for supporting us. God bless you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. By the way, these quilts, um, I don't know if our uh, cameraman can show you the quilts, but uh, there are 69 of them, and they will be shipped out this week, correct? And um, 69, isn't that amazing? So we're going to have a dedicate. We'll, part of the prayers will have a dedication uh, of the quilts. I uh, just want to say a few things. There's, uh, if you look at your faith and fellowship, your insert that you got, uh, there are a number of folks uh, battling cancer, uh, and I want to draw your attention to those uh, people there. Um, visited Beverly this week, and um, please pray for her and send her a card if you'd like. Also, Susan, uh, please keep those and the others in your prayers. Uh, we're all going to add to our prayers uh, today uh, Jeff Rogers, who's a friend of a family of ours, and he broke his neck. But he's not paralyzed. Isn't that amazing? And uh, so we're going to pray for his healing. Also, we rejoice with a baby girl was born to Kevin and Jackie Strauss. And uh, if you know them, uh, they've been waiting a while to, to have a child, and we're happy for them. Also, Jean Anderson is celebrating her birthday today. And Jean, if I invite you to send her a card, uh, you'll have to call the office to get the address. She's been in a facility, is it two years now? Maybe more. And uh, I haven't seen her since probably February or January. So she's celebrating a birthday today, and she's getting the flowers. So, Okay? So let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, dear Lord, we thank you for the ministries of our churches. And today we thank you for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League International and for the society here in this congregation who have served over these many years. And dear Lord, today we dedicate these quilts to your glory for the welfare of those who receive it. We thank you, dear Lord, that you continue to provide the materials and the people to put these quilts together. Dear Lord, as they are shipped out this week, 
May they truly be a blessing to the folks around the world, wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day for those who are battling cancer. And dear Lord, we pray for their healing and work through the medicine, the chemotherapy, the radiation, whatever it is, but work beyond that as well to bring them healing. We pray for all those with physical ailments and other issues, those recovering from surgery. We thank you that Jeff Rogers has, in his, his accident, did not injure himself more severely. We pray, dear Lord, that he will heal quickly. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, dear Father, we rejoice at the birth of children, even in this time of a pandemic. And dear Lord, today we rejoice with Jackie and Kevin over the birth of their little girl, Margaret. Dear Lord, we look forward to the day of her baptism, and we ask you to be with this family and bless them over the years to come. And be with all of our families with young children. Give them the courage and the strength. Give them the sleep and the rest that they need. And give them the ability to teach their children about you, dear Jesus, that they may pass on to this new generation your great love for them and the sacrifice you made on the altar of the cross. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit bless you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of announcements, actually quite a few. First of all, inserted in your bulletin are two flyers for the Thanksgiving baskets. We're going to try and do this again this year. Uh, hopefully we will receive names from the Department of Children and Family Services we will have some families through our pantry and others from the community. And if you are aware of a family that could be blessed by this, let me know or call the church office and uh, we can add them to the list, okay? Um, again, uh, the, the schedule is there. One of these you keep for yourself. The other you can put in the offering uh, box here in the middle aisle. And uh, please, and you have the directions to bring those. Bible classes. This Tuesday, uh, the women's class begins at 11 o'clock. And uh, my class also resumes on Wednesday at 10.30. Um, and the family, fall family picnic and movie night is Friday the 30th, correct? And it starts at 5.30. So you're welcome to 5, 4, 5 o'clock. Okay. Bring your own picnic. We're not going to feed you. <laughs> so bring your own food and spend some time outside in the garden. And, and yes, we need you to register online if you would, please. Uh, Thanksgiving baskets, and I think that's it. Nice to be back with all of you. And um, let's close with a song, shall we?
Have a good week, everybody, and Jesus bless you, and go Dodgers at the seventh game of the League Championship Series. So root for them. Communion will be served right after the service today. Have a good week. Rising again, I bless you.